So on the launch day of the Tomb Raider remasters and Lara Croft's birthday, no less, Crystal Dynamics have to swoop in and try to take the spotlight from classic fans by revealing their unified Lara Croft. And let's just say she's extremely underwhelming and has a bad case of man face. So let's go ahead and dive into this video. So I made a tweet about it here where I said Crystal Dynamics have revealed their unified Lara yawn. No thanks. I'll stick with the classic remasters that Aspire delivered. So here she is, just like I anticipated a couple videos ago, talking about, okay, this is that stubby, short legged. Lara Croft, Lara Croft, that stubby short-legged girl in cosplay trying to pretend like Lara Croft. Now, is this this remarkably beautiful Amazonian statuesque Lara Croft? No, it's not her. And some people say, well, it could have been worse. Yes, it could have been worse. They could have made her a fat, ugly trans person. But instead, we got this very basic, dull, boring, pretty standard run-of-the-mill character wearing an outfit that somewhat resembles the classic attire with some adjustments like a white undershirt and just very basic body proportions long-waisted short-legged not Lara Croft man-faced Lara Croft is supposed to be exceptionally beautiful this is not that this is Lara Croft. So let's stick with that. And by the way, I streamed the remasters for the first game in the remastered collection for nearly nine hours yesterday. And I will, I strongly, strongly suggest it. It is near perfect. The fans had a part in this, which I'll share more of that here in a minute. But let's just take a closer look at her face. That's a man. Uh, it's a very dashing, handsome man, I'll say. But that is a man. That is not... That does not look like a woman's face. Like, take this out, remove remove the, the boobs and all that, and just crop the image from here to here. It looks like a Disney prince. That is not a feminine face at all. That is not a womanly face. And it's like, this is the thing with Crystal Dynamics that is so frustrating and that they cannot grasp is it's like they don't know how to make a strong, intimidating, powerful, femme fatale character. They don't know how to make a female character strong without making her manly. You know, because that can be the argument here is, oh, wait, but we're trying to make her confident. Look how she's like strong and she looks like a dude. Why do you have to make her look like a man to make her look confident? Just makes no sense. I am I am not about this. I'm just not about it. Now, on my last video, I talked about that disclaimer that Crystal Dynamics put in the classic remasters. And some people, and I don't get it. Well, and I, I guess it's because some people don't know the difference. Some people think that Crystal Dynamics made these remasters. No, they didn't. The fans have been begging Crystal Dynamics to make these remasters for countless years now, and they have refused. They said, oh, there's no market for her. They don't align with current Lara Croft or current Tomb Raider. Their disclaimer is proof of that. They did not want this project to happen. The only reason why it did happen is because Embracer bought Tomb Raider, and then they made it happen by outsourcing this to Aspire, a completely different studio. Crystal Dynamics shouldn't even have had their name remotely attached on the in-game logos at the beginning or their disclaimer. They weren't even a part of this. So why is their name in, in the remote vicinity of it? It shouldn't be. And so they don't want, here's the thing, and, I, and people are like, oh, they think because there was a disclaimer there, oh, I'm not going to buy it then. I'm not going to buy the classic remasters because they put that disclaimer there. That'll show them. No, it won't. It's in Crystal Dynamics' best interest for you not to buy the classic remasters, for you not to play the classic remasters. You know why? Because that puts, classic Lara Croft puts this reboot person, they, them, at risk. It puts their vision at risk. And with Embracer already shutting studios down and canceling projects as it is, they risk all of that 
the more we support classic Lara Croft and classic Tomb Raider, and the more that there is a demand for classic Tomb Raider, the higher the likelihood that Crystal Dynamics will not be affiliated with Tomb Raider again. And honestly, where Crystal Dynamics may be shut down entirely, in which case I would say good riddance and I would have no mercy because they have absolutely spit in the face of the fans continuously. I have tried time and time again to give Crystal Dynamics the benefit of the doubt with Tomb Raider, but guess what? They constantly, constantly disrespect the fans and disrespect the source material. They've done so in their rebooted games when referencing the classic Lara Croft outfit. Oh, it's not practical though. Oh, classic Lara Croft is Teflon. She had no personality. Our Lara Croft has personality. Ours is better. They have disrespected the global icon who will outlive anything they ever create because classic Lara Croft stands the test of time. Her legacy will continue far beyond that studio's lifetime. So just for reference on the classic remasters and how much they actually cared about the fans, they hired fans. Here we have Conrad, and I, I mispronounced his name terribly, but Mahuski, Mahuski, I don't know. Conrad, right? I've been a fan of Conrad's fan arts for so long. Conrad has been involved in the Tomb Raider fan community for a very long time and has created some fantastic 3D models of Lara Croft. Uh, first time I saw any of his work that I recall um, was when he made a mod for the classic or for the reboot, the first game in the reboots, uh, the 2013 Lara Croft. I made a video about it on my stream channel. Um, where I tried out that mod and I liked it so much better, that character design that he created for her than the default one. Well, anyway, he is a big classic Tomb Raider fan. And he says here, it's official. I am so happy to share that I am the guy behind the Tomb Raider remastered Lara Croft model. Working alongside such an amazing and talented team was an incredible journey. Thank you for all for believing in me. He created this. As you can see, it is extremely accurate. And while I've been streaming the games, while I talked about the games, I've been like, whoa, wait a minute. I never in a million years anticipated a studio giving us this good of a Lara Croft that is this recognizable as Lara Croft. And I couldn't, I was like, how, how? And now it makes sense because they hired fans. So we have Conrad who just absolutely did Lara Croft above and beyond with the, the justice she deserves. Okay, um, and then as I scroll down here, we have Giovanni Luca, who said first, he says, first of all, thank y'all. If it wasn't for your support on my fan-made project, I would not be in this position today. I can finally reveal that I'm the art lead on the Tomb Raider Remastered Collection, and I poured my heart and soul together with a passionate team to make this happen. Um, I'm sharing this little video showcasing only Tomb Raider 3 for now because, well, it was how everything started for me. But all three games was catered with love, and I hope that our work can put a smile on your faces and that you enjoy the new experience. Have fun. Now, if you don't know, Giovanni here, and I made a video about his work too in the past, um, he was working on a fan-made Tomb Raider 3 remastered project. He even was making his own cutscenes and everything for it. And so that project came to a halt because they hired him. Again, and this isn't the only, Delka. Delka is my favorite Tomb Raider level editor creator. He made the Tomb Raider Legend D make. So he put Tomb Raider Legend in the old school Tomb Raider engine. And I streamed that D make and I said, and I told you guys, I was like, this is better than Tomb Raider Legend. It, it is better. The D make is better than the original. And that is, uh, and they hired him as well. So it's just mind blowing to me to see people who I've adored their works in the Tomb Raider community. They were hired for this project and they brought classic Lara Croft to life in, in a new way. You know, retaining the classics, retaining the charm, retaining, staying faithful to them, but bringing it to life in 
the current graphics, you know, which you can toggle if you want to play the old school graphics, all that kind of stuff. Now, here was my, one of my takeaways here. I said, uh, calling stream for after nearly nine hours for tonight, I made it to City of Camun. This remaster is an absolute dream come true. Completely blew away my expectations. Here's some of my suggestions for settings. Get settings in your game. Because in my last video at the end, I realized my screen was covering the settings I was suggesting. So tank controls are a lot better than their modern controls, which is not surprising. The grid-based system is simply built for the tank controls. And I'm not saying that just because I'm a nostalgic classic fan. I'm saying that because they are objectively better than the modern controls that they put into the game. I feel like the modern controls are unplayable. Um, so I definitely suggest that just use the D-pad. Do not try to use the joystick. I mean, you can, but you're gonna have a harder time. Um, then I said, I personally swapped the jump and action buttons with each other since I'm classic trained. That should be the default. So they did make, for some reason, they swapped out jump and action, um, with the new control scheme, which is different than the classic. So if you want to play with the classic con control scheme, which I think is a lot better, swap out the jump and action button. So if you're on PlayStation, swap out square with X. And if you're on Xbox, swap out, um, X with A. <laughs> If you didn't notice, I'm more of a PlayStation player, but I am playing this on Xbox right now. Um, and then I said, untick the action indicators unless you want to play like a journalist scrub. Basically, the action indicators are going to show exclamation marks over action item, or items that you can pick up or pull like levers and stuff. I suggest turning those off. Granted, I will say that with the updated graphics, keys and stuff do blend into the background more and I think that's why they added this because some of them are a little hard to spot um because of that and I thought it would be easier than but honestly the the old graphics it's easier so for me instead of having something like that if I scoped a room and it's like wait there should be a key here and I didn't see it well instead of putting those action indicators on I just toggle the old school graphics with the because then it's like oh, okay you can see it better on the old school graphics not that they're easy in the old school graphics. People used to complain about them blending in with the textures, but it jogs my memory. And it also, if you're specifically looking for something and you've scoped that room and you're like, I didn't see it, let me double check. That is a method that you can do that that will not detract from your experience from the game. So something else I wanted to add because of the Crystal Dynamics disclaimer that they wanted to, to spit on the classic games with and say, oh, these are so offensive racial stereotypes. So I made this tweet and I said, funny how Crystal Dynamics have condemned the classic Tomb Raider remasters for racist stereotypes depicting cannibals. Meanwhile, in their reboot trilogy, you kill a native girl's dad who wants to sacrifice her in a barbaric ritual. So can we talk about the hypocrisy here? There they're upset that there are cannibals in Tomb Raider 3 and oh this is so racially insensitive but here in Shadow of the Tomb Raider here's a little native girl and her dad wants to sacrifice her for some crazy ritual so this fake Lara uh kills him <laughs> um and I'm not even against that side mission by the way but I'm calling out the hypocrisy you can't sit on your moral high horse and act like, oh, the racial stereotypes. You literally put put natives here with child sacrifice rituals. So take all the seats, Crystal. Take all the seats. I am so over it with Crystal Dynamics. Oh, by the way, let's have a look at the website because they added, welcome to the Society of Raiders, which made me believe that a lot of the leaks from that we saw a couple years ago, nearly two years ago, were true because now from those leaks allegedly this rebooted unified Lara Croft is going to be a mentor to a society of raiders okay and she's going to be outshined by Indian raiders at the by when it's all said and done because oh she doesn't understand India history enough so she needs them to help her so here we have a quote from Conrad Roth oh, so cringe to me stop trying to force this Roth crap I don't give a crap about Roth I don't just give me classic Lara and that's it. Lara, you asked me once, who are we? This society of raiders. Okay, so they're in a society now. Lara Croft just can't be a tomb raider because she likes the thrill of it and because she wants an adventure. She has to be a part of a society. Okay. 
Where did we come from? Well, truth be told, we've always been here, exploring the darkest corners of forgotten tombs, seeking ancient treasures, uncovering truth, discovering power. We could be anyone, the captain of a ship, a museum curator, a mercenary, or even the heir to a great family. We seek answers to the questions that have haunted humanity since the beginning of time. What mystery mysteries lie und undiscovered what truths remain hidden and shrouded in myth the world is full of unanswered questions beyond all limits of reason adventure awaits ah <sighs> the, the world of tomb raider is filled with colorful characters searching for powerful secrets some are in it for the glory others to preserve history still others seek to uncover and protect knowledge lost to the ages this is what I was telling you guys. The, the, the making Lara Croft a protector of artifacts. Tomb Raiders who share similar interests watch each other's backs in the most dangerous corners of the world. When conflict is unavoidable, they struggle to best each other in contest of wits and wills, but they all have something in common, a thirst for adventure. As Crystal Dynamics continues to bring you exciting new tomb raiding experiences, we'd like to invite our fans to join the ranks of Society of Raiders. Oh, this is so gay. Like, freaking miss me with all of this. This is, those leaks were true. <laughs> I already believed them anyway. I already did because they seemed very true, but this is just further solidifies that. This makes me sick to my stomach. Lara Croft did not tomb raid to be in a society. She wasn't in a society of tomb raiders. She f survived a plane crash at 21 years old and realized, hey, I want to live a life of adventure. And she, uh, she, she did not move forward with this arranged marriage that her parents wanted for her. And instead she chose a life of adventure instead. And thusly she got disowned by her parents. That is original canon. And she just was this anti-hero obsessed with adventure adrenaline junkie who worked alone. She was a loner. She was not a part of a team or a society. This is just insane. I am not about this. I am so over everything that Crystal Dynamics touches. I am over it. I want them disconnected from Tomb Raider forever. Right now, the remasters are doing really well. And I hope that that trend continues. And I hope that Embracer drops Crystal Dynamics because I'm over it. Anyway, there you have it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I will be continuing my Tomb Raider remaster streams on my channel, uh, youtube.com slash Melanie Mac or on Kick or Twitch at Melanie Mac. Um, so you can watch me there. Thank you all again for hanging out with me. I will catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom. Miles Morales.